This is the Death Row and Executions channel. Here is your host, Paco Rivera. Hello and welcome back to the Death Row and Executions channel. My name is Paco Rivera. You can also follow me on Facebook for updates and more Death Row news. There will be a link to my Facebook in the description below. Okay, so this is the first episode of the year 2024 with the first upcoming scheduled execution for which I have not done a video. Before I continue with the presentation, I would like to send out a message. Um, I've been seeing a lot of comments and getting messages from many of you wondering why is it taking so long for you to put out another video? Please remember that in this channel, I only cover upcoming scheduled executions. So if there is no scheduled execution, it may be a while before I do the next video. Okay, so like I said, this is the first episode of 2024. First, let's briefly recap the outcome of executions from last year in 2023. In 2023, I made a video presentation on 31 scheduled executions. Of those 31 scheduled executions, if an execution was stayed, put on hold before I had a chance to create a video, to create a presentation, that is not counted here as a scheduled execution. Of those 31 scheduled executions in 2023, 24 were actually executed. We had 24 executions last year in five different states. Eight in Texas, six in Florida, four in Missouri, four in Oklahoma, and two in Alabama. Of the 31 scheduled executions for which I did a presentation in 2023, seven received the stay of execution to be rescheduled at a later date. One of them, however, Charles Lorraine, died while on death row. Angleton, Texas is a quaint small town about 45 miles from Houston. 12 years ago, in the year 2012, James Harris Jr. was living in a motel in Angleton and he ran out of money to pay rent for a motel room. So he got kicked out of the economy in motel. He was also, it was reported, addicted to crack cocaine. The following morning, after Harris was forced out of the motel, 69-year-old Darla Wilcox made a trip to the grocery store. Her husband, Alton Wilcox, who was an 85-year-old World War II veteran, stayed home to rest because he had recently injured a leg in a fall. Alton and Darla Wilcox had been married since 1986 and they lived in a house since the year 2000 that they had built on North Tinsley Street in Angleton. Soon after Darla arrived back at the house from the grocery store, about one o'clock in the afternoon, the doorbell rang. Darla opened the door because she thought it was a neighbor coming by to pick up some vegetables that the elderly couple had grown in their garden, a neighbor who was supposed to come by about that time. But it was James Harris Jr., a man who Darla did not recognize. The man forced his way into the home and told Darla that he needed money. She pulled out a $1 bill from her purse and handed it to him. Prosecutors would later say that that is when James Harris snapped. Harris pulled out a knife and stabbed Darla. At that point, Alton came out of a room in the rear of the house using a walker and Harris attacked him and stabbed him eight times, including once in the heart. Darla tried to help but he turned and continued to stab her as well. Severely injured, Darla retrieved $410 from a container in the kitchen and handed it to Harris. James Harris then tied up the elderly couple with cords and left them on the kitchen floor bleeding. He then ripped the landline telephone off the wall to prevent them from calling for help and he drove off in their 2005 Chevrolet Impala. Darla, however, had a cell phone and she used it to call 911. She gave a description of the man and details about her car, including the license plate number. 
When medics arrived at the house, Darla was unresponsive. Alton was conscious and begging the medics to take care of his wife first. The couple were airlifted to Memorial Hermann Hospital in Houston by helicopter. Darla survived, but Alton died at the hospital during surgery. Police located the couple's car in the parking lot of the Economy Inn Motel. They quickly determined who had parked the car there. And when James Harris's room was searched, they found a bloody knife in the bathroom and a bloodstained jacket hanging in the closet. James Harris gave a full confession to the crime. By November 11 of the following year, 2013, a jury was selected for trial. However, when the judge asked Harris how he wanted to plead to the capital murder charge, Harris said, guilty, your honor. Harris was later sentenced to death. It was reported that during the time Harris was locked up awaiting trial, several inmates came forward to report how Harris had been saying he has no remorse for what he had done. It was as if he was glad he did it. I suppose he doesn't have to worry about paying for a motel room anymore since he now has free room and board. But that might end on March 13th of this year as he is scheduled to be executed on that day. Alton Wilcox had served in the United States Army during World War II. He was retired from a chemical company and regularly attended the First Baptist Church of Angleton. He enjoyed beekeeping, fishing, gardening, and woodworking. He was a father, grandfather, and great grandfather. Please remember to subscribe for more Death Row and upcoming execution stories. You can also follow me on Facebook for updates. There will be a link to my Facebook in the description below. Take care and 